All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome, Apparition Jackie Guppy Force. This is one uh, just by reading the mood of you guys <laughs> in here and in the Discord. Uh, it seems that this is one you've been waiting for, so I assume there's going to be some major plot twist revealed. As we've already been hinted at, like, what the fuck? Hello, Void Dweller. <laughs> okay, first of all, is Narasaki not even, like, her own person? Like, is she, like, an alternate personality of Takako? But what about all those times when... Other people were talking to her. Did they ever call her by name? Like, did they ever react unusually when she said her name was Narasaki? Like, what is going on? Like, oh my god. Like, what about when Takako, I mean, I mean not Takako, uh, Sajiko was sleeping while Narasaki was talking? Like, is that why Sajiko blacks out? Is because that's when she's, like, acting as Narasaki? Like, what is going on? And what does this have to do with Takako's world? And by the way, they're meeting in their dreams, like they're in the same world, their dreams are connected. That sounds quite romantic, but oh my god! All right, let's keep going. What the fuck is gonna happen here? Here we go. Narasaki is by this lake. Hello, Blue Shifting, welcome to the stream. Here we go. Narasaki got warped to this place here. I walked across the shallow beach. The stars flickered in the water puddles as I stepped on them. However, the scenery would not change. No matter how far I walked, it was either a starry sky or a starry sky with some holes repeating over and over. <sighs> well now, I stuck my right index finger into my mouth and bit down on it. It hurt. <laughs> hey, Rashi console arts would have that friggin' uh, bending rubber sound effect here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Glancing at one of the puddles, I saw the reflection of a woman with long black. <gasps> no way! She is, isn't she? She is. She is. An alternate personality or something of Sajiko. But they look so different. Oh, oh my, like, oh my god. You'd think Mayuko, if anybody, would be the one. Like, from Takako's world line. I saw the reflection of a woman with long black hair and black eyes staring back at me. I closed one of my eyes and so did she. Yup! I shifted my gaze back to the horizon. I stuck my hand in my pocket and pitched out my car keys. They felt cold to the touch. I turned them a few times in my hand and continued toward the horizon. Suddenly, I felt like I heard something. I took a few more steps, and the noise, kind of static, reminiscent of hearing tests, increased. I stopped and strained my ears to listen. The sound was coming from below. I guess that's true, Apparition. She's kind of giving herself therapy. <laughs> that, that, that seems to be the case. How, however, there was only a puddle of water at my feet. Its surface reflecting a massive black cloud. Just when I looked up, the puddle suddenly swallowed me. A 
Hello T, welcome to the stream. Heavy rain poured all over me. I was still on the same shallow beach, except now it's in the middle of a storm. As I glanced at the black cloud, the rainfall grew in intensity. Following the apparent source of the sound, the place where it felt the loudest, I soon reached a tropical forest of sorts. That fucking island! There had to be something magical they found on that fucking island that started all this. That, that vacation island from the beginning seems to be like the source of all this. I rushed there to escape the rain. Water trickled down my hair, getting into my eyes. Suddenly, I heard something from the woods. Is someone there? I spotted traces of footsteps in the direction the sound was coming from. I followed them, noticing some broken branches along the way as well. I stepped over a big set of roots rising from the ground and climbed the limestone rock blackened by the elements to find a hole splitting the path in two. Yup, back here. It was the entrance to, the, to a cave surrounded by ferns. Well, Takako and Sachiko are, are different people. But... Well, when did she ever see them in the story in the same area? Boy Dweller. Like, they've been on separate world lines. So, we have no idea what the truth really is. Look at how huge it is. I heard something reminiscent of human voices from within. Oh my god, is that them from the beginning? Is someone there? I repeated about my question. My words reverberated across the, the cave walls. My god. The more I do this voice, the more it sounds so much like Entrapta. Jeez. At least from my perspective. I waited for a dozen or so seconds, but received no reply. I climbed down the hole. Having reached an area with a solid roof, the sound of rain from outside began to abate. Instead, I heard the scarce dripping of water. There were countless paths branching off in various directions in front of me. Some were too narrow for a person to pass, while others seemed good enough to drive a car through. All of them had complex shapes, like lava stones. I pressed forward, trying to find some even footing when I heard disjointed voices from some of the tunnels. Wanted to show me? Fireflies. You mean? Was told you wanted to see? I followed the voices until I saw a light beyond a large black rock. Huh. Oh, sorry. Huh. I heard a voice by my right ear. Whoa! As I stepped on a puddle of water, my leg got swallowed by it. The sensation was similar to missing a step on the stairs. Ooh, I hate it when that happens. I ended up losing my balance and plummeted down into a dark void. Holy shit. I opened my eyes only to realize I was slowly sinking. As I regained control of my body, I extended my arms and landed at the bottom. He's on the seabed. Oh my god. <laughs> the water was crystal clear, 
If one discounted the sensation of weightlessness, this was hardly different from the inside of the cave. I exhaled a breath. It didn't feel uncomfortable at all. The air bubbles ascended, getting stuck sucked towards the light coming from the hole I fell through. It looks like she can breathe here just okay. Um, this... Oh, that was... Um, this... I heard a voice from beyond the water. There was a dark cave entrance right in the middle of the seabed! I turned around and began walking toward it. It felt like walking on clouds. Although I drew further away from the light coming from the hole, I painted the entire place pale blue. Almost like it had simply melted into the water. I was moving onwards with one hand on the wall when I heard some voices again. Wow, there's a window here! I can see the vegetables in the inner yard from here. There was a huge window covered by the sta stairs, too. I wonder if they built them later. Jeez, uh, what is this from? Damn it, this is this gotta be Sachiko and Takako talking, but... Was this another vacation moment? They must have been in quite in a hurry when they did that. Few people nowadays think of modern architecture as superior. Uh, look at how small that door is. I wonder if it's a broom closet. Oh, it's locked. You can ask the landlord about it later. I'll do that. Oh, no, 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 no. Void Dweller, we don't... They've, they've said it maybe like twice in this. It's nowhere near the I can't be helped of the console arcs. I only started that because it was just, they did it so many times. <laughs> it is. Like literally, there were over 50 instances across all the console arcs. I wonder if it's this room. Oh. I wonder if it's this room. Oh, the plate matches the key, at least. Let me see if it fits the lock. It's bigger than I thought. Concrete walls, huh? Oh. We could raise hell in here and no one would hear us. Oh, I sw swapped them, probably. It's bigger than I thought. Concrete walls, huh? We could raise hell in here and no one would hear us. Oh, I'm not planning to do anything like that. I'll open the windows. All right. These seem to be like their memories or something. Does Narasaki like represent their memories of each other or something? Like this is between the two of them. I see. Oh God, I really wish we had name tags. So we're taking, so we're taking this one. Yeah. Okay. We have to get our stuff then. Tomorrow's going to be a busy day. Indeed. I continued down the rocky path, sweeping my hands through the water. Are you there? My voice turned into bubbles disappearing in the darkness above me. I realized that the cave ceiling had grown low enough for me to reach it. The path turned more uneven, so I slowed my pace and continued in careful steps. I spotted the silhouette of a crouching person in front of a large rock in the distance. Well, it's probably magic or something like that. Oh my god! As I drew closer, I realized it was just an old doll. The path would grow narrow and then widen up again. However, the rock walls surrounding me on both sides remained the same. 
I completely lost sense of how far I'd walked. I could no longer hear anything besides the echo of the dripping water and my own footsteps. On the other side of the rock, there was a huge puddle of water. I also spotted a large hole in the rocks beyond it. Though I caught a glimpse of some green trees and a darkened sky beyond the hole. Most of the view was blocked by the water pouring down through it like a waterfall. Yep, we're back here. Back at the beginning. I wonder how far into the story I am. The ceiling rocks around it glimmered in a pale bluish hue. As a dark cloud passed by the hole, the ceiling lit up like a sky illuminated by stars. I realized that my body felt very heavy. The sensation of walking underwater faded, and I was once again back on solid ground. I stopped for a while to observe the blue stars, which formed no constellation whatsoever, as well as the puddle in the waterfall. The path ended here. I looked down into the water. Yeah, I think this was the very first one, or second. Yeah, I think this was stream number two, uh, where they were in this cave. This is crazy. This is like, uh, I, I, it almost feels like we've entered Kingdom Hearts here. Like, is any of this real or not? When you walk away. <laughs> anyway, back to the story. It looked like a stairway continuing downward without end. I want to see it. Oh. I want to see it. Kozway! I knew she's got to be the linchpin to this. I could have sworn I heard Kozway's voice. I'm too tired to go back now. This is the... Is this the dream? Wait. I stepped into the water and was transported to a shining blue world. What is going on? Still underwater. After the voices have ceased, I continued down the lone path for a while. Soon enough, I started hearing something in the distance again. It reminded me of a rock falling on something hard, or perhaps a chess piece swiftly being placed on a board. Oh, oh wow, what's going on here? <gasps> Wait a minute! Wait, but... Was Narasaki, like, brought to life? Was she, like, given her own life by somebody? So if, if she recognizes her as a separate person... Y'all remember that girl that was with us when we talked to Lily? Yes. Don't y'all think she's just like you when you were little? Whoa! Okay! So this is something really magical then. Oh, wow. Oh my god. So, if Nanai sees her as a separate person, then that means she actually has... That means she actually has her own body. But then how did she... Was she like straight up come out of her mind? I 
Really? In what way? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought that was Nana, because I could barely make out these sprites. Sorry, goddammit. Okay, sorry. Okay, this is Narasaki and Sachiko talking. Okay. Sorry. Damn it. Again, name tags would solve all these issues. I can barely see those paint sprites. I'll start I'll start the scene over. Remember that girl that was with us when we talked to Lily? Yes. Don't you think she's just like you when you were little? Really? In what way? Her unsociable attitude and quick wits. Actually, that part of you hasn't changed at all. When did you become like that? I think I was born this way. Takako had sociability for the both of us. And you were the brains for you both. <laughs> Harsh, but kind of true. <laughs> ah, that sounds about right. Okay, no, no, no. I thought they were. I thought that was uh, Nanai and Sachiko talking about Narasaki. That's why I got confused. Okay, but it was Narasaki and Sachiko talking about uh, talking about Nanai. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, jeez. Suddenly, one of my legs sink into the ground. Talking about Cosway, sorry. Anyway. I saw a puddle, black as ink, as I glanced down. Beyond the slope behind me, I saw a sp sparkling water surface. Above it fluttered the starlit sky. Black puddles by my feet grew bigger, separating from water like oil. Heavy water like a black mirror gave a clear reflection of my body. I tried stepping forward, creating a ripple in the blackness. I felt my shoe press against the hard, rocky bottom underneath it. I put my other leg in the blackness. I felt like I had stepped into the deep sea. There was solid ground at my feet. It had continued sinking. The blackness enveloped me, robbing me of sight. However, the ground evened out, making it easier to walk forward. I strained my ears and heard another sound. It reminded me of the clanging of dishes. Takako. Yeah, there's Sachiko, Takako, and um, the girl I gave the Jessica voice to from the office. It smells great, but I like it when it's more sweet. Uh, oh, Fumi. Yeah, that's it. That's it, Jackie. Oh, why would you want to ruin the taste of something this delicious? This flavor might have been a bit too early for you, Takako. I heard Sajiko, Takako, and the voice of another woman I didn't know. And that's another thing, like, when they're interacting with Takako, how is that even happening? if she's a hallucination. Instant tea is already more than good enough for her. Is that still apple tea? Yeah, Sajiko brings it home sometimes. It's a bit too sweet, but it's not bad for the price. And this is the instant green tea, right? Yep. 
It only has Ceylon written on the label. Ceylon? You mean Sri Lanka? Speaking of tea brands from Sri Lanka, Five Kinds is a good one. Whoa, that's a cool name. Sounds almost like some superhero show. <sighs> it refers to five tea leaves. Uva, Candy, Nora, Alia, Dimbula, and Ruhana. It sounds like Darjeeling tea. Ranger Red! <laughs> That's the only color it has, though. <laughs> Did the background behind you explode when you drink your apple tea? Wouldn't it be a problem if you could buy something that dangerous so easily? Oh, we should blackmail them and claim the entire tea shop for ourselves. Yeah. You two are starting to lose me. And it's not even spring yet. The voices grew louder as I continued, then began to fade as I just walked past them, as though I just walked past them. When the voices completely ceased, I strained my ears again, but could no longer hear a thing. I tried saying something myself, but it had no effect. I couldn't perceive anything besides the ground at my feet, so I didn't even know how wide this cave was right now. After confirming the condition of the auditory landscape, I started walking again. Something akin to mist appeared in the darkness in front of me. Oh, there is baby Takako. It looked kind of like a red. It looked kind of like a red. Oh, stars! I forgot to do her voice. Damn it! I was too caught up in the story. It looked kind of like a red and blue at the same time. As I followed it with my eyes, a small girl appeared in the corner of my eye and dashed further into the cave. She looked like Takako in her childhood. I didn't actually see her directly. It was just a reflection on the cave wall. I narrowed my eyes while still looking at that huge black mirror when a light suddenly lit up behind me. Its reflection on the wall momentarily rendered me blind. Oh my god. What is going on? And we're back to Sajiko. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god! I turned the page. The rays of the evening sun filtered in through the window of the dead silent glass room. Oh, are we back in school? The white curtains fluttered as a ghost, gust of cold wind swept into the room through the open window, cooling my cheeks. I glanced at the clock. I get a plane and the voices of children in the distance. Let's do this. Oh. Let's do this. Okay, so flashback to high school again, I guess. I suddenly heard Takako's voice on the outside. Well? Wow. He actually got stuck in the trunk. <laughs> Okay, that's a, a random person. Okay. I looked down from the window to see Takako and one of our classmates throwing something at a cherry blossom tree behind the judo hall. What on earth are you two doing there? Oh, God damn it! that's a, a different pe person. What on earth are you two doing there? Our English teacher appeared from within the school building. Oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone around the tree scattered like startled animals. The tree teacher went after Takako, who seemed to be the most likely ringleader, and caught her by the collar. Oh, it's a guy. God damn it. He then pulled her back in the, into the building. Uh, 
I glance at the clock again and return to my book. After about 50 pages, I heard footsteps in the corridor. <laughs> Takako entered the classroom with a sigh. I thought you already left, Sachiko. I forgot my key, so I need to wait until my sister gets home. I see. Let's go home together then. She sat down in a seat which was right in front of mine. Wait, or was that Sachiko's line? God damn it. Thank you, Jackie. Oh, God. The only, only, only issue I have with this game is the lack of name tags. Only issue. I love everything else about it. And I did not know that Sachiko had a sister. I forgot my key, so I need to wait until my sister gets home. I see. Let's go home together then. She sat down in a seat, which was right in front of mine. Oh, that's right. I wanted you to help me with homework. But we didn't get anything today. I have to write a written, written apology in English. Oh, what did you do this time, as if I didn't already know? Takago took out a small steel plate from a skirt pocket and handed it to me. Uh, the rest got confiscated. Is that the shuriken you bought during our last school trip? <laughs> I used the whetstone in the industrial arts room to sharpen them. I want to do some Naruto shit! Come on! Shadow Clone Jutsu! Oh. Oh, and uh, I wouldn't recommend touching the edges. The edges of the steel glimmered in a sharp silver light. Oh my god! I didn't even notice that! Blue shifting! Oh my god! You are a saint! I didn't even notice that! The, the arrow glowed a slightly different color based on who was talking! Wow! Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy shit! That is gonna save me a ton! Oh my god. Thank you. You are a fucking saint, blue shifting. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's right. It's green now for Takako. Oh my god. Oh my god. Are you serious? Yup, and it's so green for Takako! Oh my god! Oh my god, Blue Shifting, you are the savior of this Let's Play! <laughs> oh my god! It had to be pointed out to you too, no wonder it's so tiny! Oh my god. The teachers got angry at me when I tested them on a tree. Oh, no, 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 it's not. Oh, god damn it. No, it's not true, because look. Because that's Sachiko, but it's not blue. God damn it. Okay. Oh, well. It would have been nice. It would have been nice. 
Ah, I got my hopes up for nothing. Damn it. Yeah. Of course they did. Are you crazy? I do feel sorry. Okay. Talk ago, let out a groan. So, what exactly happened with the teachers there? Oh. God, see now? Uh. No, it's okay, blue shifting. Seriously, that's, you don't need to apologize. You do not need to apologize. No harm, no foul. Seriously. So what, ex so what exactly happened with the teachers there? Uh, they said that trees can start to rot if you damage their bark. That's all? Then they told me to consider how I'd feel if someone threw these things at me. And did you? <laughs> Takako clutched her stomach and fell to her knees. <laughs> Are you still planning to keep that up? No. Then you don't need this anymore. I folded my handkerchief around the shuriken and put it in my bag. Ah! Where are you taking it? I'll bring it to the teacher's room. They can do away with it like they did with the rest. Wait, no! You don't have a use for it anymore, do you? <laughs> it has a sentimental value? I know you won't be able to resist if it's right in front of your eyes. She considered me with imploring eyes for a few moments, then clutched her head and collapsed onto the desk with her upper body. Uh, you have no idea how long it took to sharpen them. Uh, she let out another groan. You're always having fun. Oh. You're always having fun. Takako laz lazily rested, raised her face with her other body still on the desk. And you're not? Aside from studying, not really. Most of my fun tends to come from watching you. I don't like to be around so many people. Damn, Sachiko, you are such a mood. Seriously, Sachiko. Relatable as fuck. Really? Yes. I would always try to be alone in school as much as I could. The sound of a bat hitting a ball reaches from the baseball field. The school buildings beyond the window. The cherry blossoms around them. And the scenery of the town in the distance had all been painted orange by the evening sun. Okay, back to the storyline. Oh my god, okay, Sachiko. Is she still in the dream world? I think she is. She might be able to meet Narasaki here. I wonder if Takako can be here so they can all meet in the dream world. Looking around, I saw brick walls in the darkness. One of them had a hole through which I could see some greenery. I approached and tried touching the leaves, but my hand passed through them like they were fog. After that, they immediately vanished. I'm scared. Oh, it's the baby Takako. She's, yep, yeah, okay. She's still in the dream world with baby Takako. I'm scared. Takako glassed the hem of my skirt with both of her hands. I can't walk like this. 
I stuck my hands under her armpits and lifted her up. Oh my god! <laughs> I took a few steps back and lowered myself in a big rock, ending up with Chakako on my lap. We're not walking anymore? Oh, we're just taking a short break. As we explore the depths of oblivion, apparently. I could feel Daka go wriggle on my knees, even though I couldn't see her. The sound of dripping water reverberated across the tunnel's walls. I heard a gulp. Are you thirsty? I'm a little too young for that, but in, in, in like a decade or so, yeah, I'm always going to be thirsty. Very funny. Thanks. I reached out toward her and took a thermos bottle lid from her. The liquid inside it was cool, but I couldn't quite tell the taste. Did you have tea in this? It was either water, or tea, or juice. I took another sip. If it was water, it should have been tasteless. If it was tea, there should have been a bitter aftertaste. And juice should have a certain sweetness to it. I forgot. I can't tell either. <laughs> I wonder what it is. I hope it's not something scary. After I finished the contents of the lid, I placed it on Takako's head for her to take away. <laughs> oh! Want some more? I'm fine. I felt Takako move on my lap again. What's wrong? Let's go! Did you remember the correct way? N no, but... Then it's okay. Let's rest for a while longer. Staring into the darkness, I spotted something in the corner of my eye that reminded me of letters. I shifted my gaze to them, but they blurred together and disappeared like water paint. Uh, are you angry? Takago asked. Why do you think that? Well, we got lost because of me. I'm not angry. Really? Don't worry. It shouldn't be that hard to get out of here. Uh. But, yes. I'm not angry, but you never think anything you do through... <laughs> Fucking hell. I swear. Like, Takako is exactly like... My god. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you should keep that in mind next time. My god, I am getting the biggest sense of deja vu here. <laughs> I found Takako's face in the darkness and seized her cheeks. Oh, Clay. <laughs> I let her go. I'm hungry. Don't you have some snacks in your bag? Oh, right. Takako picked up a backpack. The sound of a zipper followed soon after. Huh? You run out? No, there were some candies inside. Here you go. Takako handed me a candy. I felt something hard and round being placed into my palm. Takako bit through our own with an audible crunch. I popped the candy into my mouth. It had a sweet artificial aroma. I couldn't identify exactly which fruit it was supposed to be. 
Talkako continued munching away on her candy. After a while, she stopped moving and I could hear her breathing as, even as she, even out as she dozed off. All of a sudden, I heard approaching footsteps. It's either Narasaki or Takako. Turning towards the source of the sound, I saw a dim light in the distance. It grew bigger as the footsteps drew closer, making my eyes hurt. It's Narasaki, okay. Through my narrowed eyes, I could make out Narasaki with a lighter in hand. She spotted us and raised her hand. Hey. Narasaki? Took me a while to find you. You were looking for me? Yep. Narasaki's white coat was drenched in water, making her curves stand out more than usual. <laughs> Sajiko likes to pretend she's she's above above it all but she's not she's not and that's part of the reason why she loves takako because takako like just like talks like says things that she wants to say or do but uh is is too has to keep up her like dignified persona and like her maturity and feels like she has to be the mature one to do it and like takako is just there to like to like let loose for her and just like, you know, be, basically be her wings, I guess you could say, metaphorically. What happened to you? You're completely soaked. I had a few adventures on my way here. Oh, that, that was more Burngas I had a few more uh, adventures on my way here. Narasaki smiled as I stared at the water drops dripping from her hair. She placed it on the lighter. She placed the lighter on the ground and sat down on a rock in front of me. Were you worried about me? Yeah. I thought you might be in trouble again. Oh. Were you worried about me? Yeah. I thought you might be in trouble again. You truly are obsessed with your work. Uh, it's not like I have anything else to do. Oh, I see Taka goes here too. Sorta. Long time no see. Upon noticing Taka go, she quickly waved in her direction. I stared at Narasaki. She returned it with a questioning look. I just thought it was kind of odd to see you together like this. Narasaki made a characteristically faint smile. Ti time doesn't exist here, so the unusual is actually not so usual at all. Because we're in a dream? Not exactly. Interesting. What is going on? So, uh, did I swap them? Uh. Fucking hell! This is so good. Uh, uh, it's really getting annoying. Because uh, uh, I wish they wouldn't have separate quote lines when one character is saying two sentences in a row. That always throws me off. At the very least, they could stop doing that. Time doesn't exist here, so the unusual is actually not so usual at all. Because we're a dream? Not exactly. How is this not a dream? 
Well, it's not like I comprehend everything about this phenomenon either. But there are a few crucial things I noticed that separated from a dream. I say this is simply a place where the present and the past cross. You're awfully calm about this, Narasaki. Seriously. I think I would be scared shitless. <laughs> is this like a normal thing you do? Just go into alternate dimensions and shit. I am marveled about how unfazed she is at all of this. Like, Sachiko thought it was a dream, but... Her, it's like... How is she so unfazed? What is that supposed to mean? Ah, uh, okay. Let me start exp explaining how it's different from a dream. Didn't you feel anything unusual on your way to this place? <sighs> I retraced my steps with the small talk ago. I thought it was just another dream at first. But I can remember I was in Nanai's mansion just before. And it feels a bit too realistic. I don't know how to put it. You've got your full wits about you. Narasaki added. Yes, that's it. It's too realistic for a dream. But I can tell it cannot be real. It's as though there's a translucent membrane separating me from it. I guess it feels like a bit when you hypnotized me. Exactly. My hypnosis partially recreated this exact same state. So this is neither reality nor a dream. Yeah. Well, I guess it still def depends on your definition of a dream. Oh? Narasaki inhaled a breath. Okay. Then, let me explain this both this place and your condition. I still had many, 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 many questions, but I decided not to interrupt her. Narasaki made a small nod and opened her mouth. For starters, I wouldn't say you're awake right now. Your condition is similar to being sleeping or being hypnotized, but it's not entirely like that. As I've mentioned before, your consciousness is fully alert. Now, when you sleep or are hypnotized, your consciousness to grow foggy and become receptive to any information with little scrutiny. However, you keep questioning and analyzing everything around you right now, correct? In a way, you could say you somehow ended up in a dream with your consciousness unaffected. It's not something that happens often, though, so I wouldn't bet on it. Anyway, that's the gist of it. Okay, that makes sense, but then how are you here? How did you get into her dream? And the other Takako was also here too, from the other world line. Narasaki showed me her hand and spread her fingers apart. Let's say that each of these fingers represents one of the five senses. Well, the palm is the mind. When you're awake, your hand is open like this. Your fingers are like antennas transferring information to your mind from the outside world. Narasaki closed the gaps between her fingers. When you sleep, your antennas are closed like this. You need to fold them up with your, when your brain organizes the information you received. Next, she made a fist. And this is your current situation. Your senses have changed directions and are pointed in, pointing inward. They are functioning properly, but aren't directed outside. They're trying to get information from inside your mind. Can I ask something? Yeah. When you talk about the senses, you mean sight, hearing, touch, and so on, right? How could they face inwards? My eyes, ears, skin, and so on only exist in the real world, right? Of course. 
It's not your actual sense organs that are inverted, but the channels that the information travels through. Uh, just think of it as a metaphor or whatever, she added. Okay. I gave her a hesitant answer. I tried imagining what she meant. Narasaki said nothing over that time, so I asked another question. So, if my senses are inverted right now, what about everything I'm sensing here? It's neither real nor a dream, correct? Narasaki gestured toward her surroundings. That's one more thing I need to explain about this place and where it actually is. Good, please explain. Do you remember how we discussed the alternate world in your head when we were talking about the symptoms of your, of your hallucinations? I remembered that event from the real world. It was something I discussed with Narasaki right after waking up from a nap in the rest area at the end of the corridor in Nanai's mansion. Was it when you said the directions would be all inverted? Yes. And that's this place. You're perceiving that alternate world right now. I tried understanding what she said, but only ending up with more questions. My biggest- I kind of get it, but my biggest question is how are you here? If, if this is supposed to be her mind. I jeez, that's my biggest question. How the fuck did you get inside Sajiko's mind universe? What kind of world was this supposed to be? Why did it exist in the first place? I am so glad that Sajiko is asking all these questions. Seriously, that she's not just taking it. What was its purpose? Did it even have any? And why was I here right now? Confused by this endless stream of questions, I began to see the, con see the contours of my surroundings as increasingly blurry. Or perhaps I was merely imagining things. Either way, after a blink, everything had returned to normal. It must have been caused by the darkness around us. I glanced at Takako, still resting on my knees, then at my own arms, cradling her. What is happening to me in the real world? Uh, your condition is similar to being lightly hypnotized right now. It's actually a bit problematic, to tell the truth. You've already experienced hypnosis before, you can probably tell, but some of the memories inaccessible during normal sleep get unlocked in this condition. A professional usually guides you in the direct, right direction when you're in that state, but right now you have no one guiding you because I somehow ended up in this world. If you stay in here for too long, your memories might get all over the place and won't return to their proper location. And without anyone guiding you, there is no one to wake you up either. Wouldn't someone just notice I was sleeping for too long and wake me up? As long as your consciousness is in here, you won't wake up, no matter what they do. Then what the hell am I supposed to do to come back? Relax. It's actually not that hard. For starters, you have to draw your consciousness away from here. And the easiest way to do that is simply sleep. So are we going to go back and forth between this, uh, Th these two realities? Like, if she just sleeps, then... Interesting. Yeah, it might be a bit uncomfortable in a place like this. But what can you do? Is there anything else? I'll carry the real you to your bed so you can wake up in your usual place. How are you here?! And how is that even possible if Narasaki is not a, re is not a separate person? Because 
Narasaki being a separate person would explain, not being a separate person, would explain how she's here. If she is just an alternate personality of Sachiko, that would explain how she's in here in the first place. But then how, how could she carry her on her back? <laughs> if her back doesn't technically exist. I imagine Narasaki carrying me on her back. No one had done that to me since I was a child, so it felt a bit embarrassing. But I was asleep, so I probably wouldn't remember it anyway. That's all? Yep. Said Narasaki. What happens if my memories can return to their proper location? Well, you said it was odd to see me and the young Takako together. If you stay in here for too long, it'll stop seeming that way to you. And it'll get harder and harder to remember reality, so she'll go insane, basically. And he might even start thinking of reality as a dream and this world is real. I tried imagining what it would mean to never return. This wasn't a dream, but a world inside my mind. It was different from sleeping, but at the same time, very similar to it. This is a kind of neat ability to have this ability to even do this in the first place. I would try to use it to like store information. You could even go on vacation without ever leaving your house. A dream you could not wake up from. If I stayed here for too long, I wouldn't be able to come back. There were still many, many, many things that didn't make sense to me. This world was ambiguous and uncertain. Almost like a fairy tale. Was it because half of my brain was asleep or something? Narasaki waited for my reaction with a gentle expression. It's okay. I know what's on your mind, I think. Your current condition is something I can tap and been swallowed by a massive wave and being unable to tell up from down. Besides, your senses are dulled even further in a dark place like this. It's because of this place that I have trouble following this? Yes. Narasaki looked around the darkness. The lighter illuminated the rock wall surrounding us. The rocks in the darkness made complex patterns at the boundary of the light. I watched them until they turned into something akin to a kaleidoscope. Okay, thank you for asking that! I love that Sachiko is asking all these questions. I wonder how I ended up like this. I don't know the details. That's something I'd like to know myself. I wonder if Nanai was behind that. Narasaki turned to me. Takako was sleeping on my lap. I tried remembering the path I took to reach this place, but the cable car was the furthest my memories would go. Everything before that point was covered by a thick fog. Not that it mattered if I remembered the beginning.
I doubted that the path I took in this world had much of a connection to the cause, which likely happened in reality. If you're looking for a clue, you shouldn't look for it within the dream. I felt as though she had read my mind, but she continued before I could say anything. Did Nanai say something to you? Nanai? An image of a person materialized in my mind. The new friend I made. She strongly reminded me of Takako, except a billion times crazier. Oh, that's right. I was talking to her. I placed my arm on Dr. Go's hair and tried remembering what happened. Oh, that's right, I remember talking to her. She said she wanted me to live with her in the mansion. Uh, red flags! Nar Narasaki slowly nodded. When I said nothing else, she had a breath and closed her eyes. That doesn't sound too bad. I suppose so. I stroked Chakago's hair. Uh, I'm sorry for making you worry like this. Don't be. I'm the one who should have paid more attention to you. I heard a drop of water fall in the distance. Why'd you go to such a dark cave, anyway? I followed her. I gave Takako's head a pat, which made her lightly squirm in her sleep. Well, this brings back memories. Yes. She'd always take me to odd places and we'd get lost. I've been meaning to ask, but why do you keep following her then? I... don't know. I was afraid to let her go by herself. And I suppose I preferred spending time with her than to being alone. I see. And I could always scold her when that happens. We were just discussing that before you came. And what did you two extrapolate from this situation? If you go into a dark place following just your instincts, you'll get lost. Well, that makes sense. I know a few words alone won't change her. Not to mention she was particularly reckless during this period. Uh, she's still little. She can't differentiate between do's and don'ts just yet. I just realized something. When she was little, Takako might have actually been testing herself. I still wish she'd been more cautious, though. You were always the cautious one. You appeared calm and thoughtful, even though you didn't know much more than her. Was I really like that? Yeah. Most little children don't know much about the world. Which is why they're always so curious about everything. They have yet to get hurt and no fear. Which leads them to want to try all sorts of things.
Togoko slept with her mouth open against my chest. Looking kind of foolish. <laughs> oh my god! Like trying down stilts that are too large, only to lose your balance and crash into the ground. That's the kind of kid she was. Indeed. This is how kids learn about the world around them. She'll calm down eventually. Togoko had already always been interested in everything, no matter how old she got. I, on the other hand, had very few interests, like you've said before. Togoko closed her mouth with a silly sound and began squirming on top of me again. I see. Perhaps I was just curious at why Takako was so excited about everything. I looked down to see Takako's small hand on my chest. Her tiny chest rose up and down in sync with her breathing. I wonder where she was trying to take me this time. She didn't tell you? She said she was taking me home, but it didn't seem like it was Takako's old house. Not the one I'm familiar with, anyway. I'm not sure she was telling the truth, either. On the other end of the light, Narasaki stoked out a little and joined her hands on her knees, then separated them again a few times. It's true that Takako Sanatorium is there on the other end of the tunnel. What? What? How does she know about that? How does she know about that? I know it. Oh, thank you, Sachiko. Why do you know that? What the fuck, Narasaki? What the fuck? What the actual fuck are you doing? I am really, really suspicious of you now. Like, holy shit, what? So those scenes were in the past. <gasps> I used to work there. Said Narasaki in a nonchalant tone, that bitch. All the while fixing her eyes on me. I had many, many things I wanted to ask her. But they all disappeared from my mind before I could put them into words. My head just wouldn't function properly. Narasaki was the first to speak up. You want to be with her forever. I looked at her and shook my head. If you're worried, I imagine other people would be worried about me just the same. Oh, that's not a problem. If 
you want to remain here, I'll take care of the other side. What the fuck are you, Narasaki? You are definitely not a normal human being. What do you mean, take care? I didn't convince a lot of people if I just remained unconscious for the rest of my life. That's not as big of an issue as you think. If you simply dispel the state of hypnosis from your body, it won't be that different from the real you. Even if your consciousness remains here, what the... So there will be two? She'll like split her soul or some shit? What the fuck? I... It'll be capable of everything you were. You just won't be conscious of it. You are way too powerful! This goes beyond psychology! You are some kind of witch! Exactly! How could it be like me if my consciousness is not there? What? What? Oh, people can survive without a consciousness just fine. Do you remember how you ate your dinner a week ago? What kind of clothes you wore? Your consciousness already doesn't register most of the things you do. Nor do others. And even you, who's the main consciousness, can't figure out how you ended up in this condition. You could switch out a person with a hollow robot. And you wouldn't be able to tell the difference most of the time. Not unless you know that person extremely well. Narasaki continued as I felt silent and scared shitless. As such, you should just do what you want. Now that all the doors of your memories are open, you can return to any place you wish. You can attend school with Akako again. I don't trust you at all! I don't trust you at all! I don't trust you in the least. Zero percent! I knew something was up with you in the beginning. Narasaki considered the darkness to the right. The lighter illuminated the right half of Narasaki's cheeks. Then she shifted her gaze to the darkness behind me. If you go over there, you'll get to the sanatorium she currently resides at. What the fuck? What the actual fuck? What do you mean by currently? School, huh? I enjoyed staying in the classroom after everyone had gone home or to their clubs, just reading books on my own. Is this Narasaki or, or, or Sajiko? Damn. I think this is Sachika. Sometimes I could hear the lousy sounds of someone practicing the trumpet in the music room. Or the racket of the boys playing football or baseball in the athletics field. 
That is, Void Dweller, you are taking the words right after my mouth. Right out of my mouth. I am thinking the exact same thing. Too good to be true. Yeah, there's a price that she's not saying. Exactly. That is exactly what I'm thinking. She is way too in control of this situation. I grew fond of that bustling, but nonetheless calm atmosphere. I only realized that after I graduated in the Thomas, I spent alone in Greece. You can come back. Takako will be there too. The boisterous atmosphere I love possesses a sense of change. Everyone is full of goals and dreams. They changed and evolved to achieve them. Going back there with Takako would be returning to a stagnant environment. She would be bored to death by it all. More than anything, she loves the new, the fresh. Uh, perhaps you're right. Then how about over there? Her distant gaze was returned to me. I don't know, but I still feel like I wouldn't be right. Both places exist only in my mind, so there'd be little difference between them anyway. Yeah. Narasaki's mad that she's not falling for her, falling for her offer. I realized Narasaki's eyes had narrowed, as though she was scrutinizing me. Then again, it could have also been just an illusion of the dim, flickering light. No. That place alone is slightly different. It's designed so that Takako, who likes new things, wouldn't get bored. Who designed it? How is she there? This is really fucking creepy. This, seriously. Narasaki closed her mouth. I looked up and saw only darkness. I couldn't make out the ceiling. I imagined the sanatorium Takako stayed at within, within that darkness. I learned that Takako's here, and that's good enough for me! She's gotta get Takako out! How did she get there in the first place? How would... This is insane. This is completely insane. This is completely insane. If that's okay with you, I have nothing else to say said Narasaki. Let's get out of here then. Oh, let's get out of here then, she added. It might be worth rereading re the scene. I, I would agree, because this is a huge bombshell. Um, there's something else I'd like to ask you. Okay, but... Asking something about Takako or myself would be fairly pointless. Why? Yes, why? Oh, well, I won't! You'll forget everything the moment you wake up. Are you going? Yeah, it's not like time on the other side has stopped. You wouldn't want to catch a cold, would you? Narasaki stood up and patted her coat, 
to see if it had dried up. It had, which didn't particularly surprise me. So how do we leave? God damn it! I really wish she had asked! Narasaki seems to know how to get into people's minds and shit. Like... I'll walk out. You should just go to sleep if you start feeling drowsy. That's all I need to do? Yeah. I'll leave the lighter with you. Having stayed in this darkness for so long, it's possible your consciousness might melt away or something before you even get the chance to grow sleepy. Don't leave this area, okay? Okay. Narasaki nodded. I realized something by coming here. I am trusting you negative percent. The reason I made up that story about Takako going missing. Oh, that, that was goddamn, I swapped them again. I realized something by coming here. The reason I made up that story about Takako going missing. I probably couldn't acknowledge this Takako was no longer here. Why do you think that? I glanced at the tiny sleeping Takako. Because it hurts. A lot. I stroked Takako's hair. I see. Narasaki. I wanted to I wanted to ask her what she thought of it, but quickly changed my mind. It's important what I think, isn't it? Oh. Is it? Yes. Well then. Narasaki turned towards the darkness. Are you going to be okay? It's no big deal. Narasaki smiled. Is there anything else bothering you? No, I'm sure you'll be fine, no matter what happens. I will. Don't you need any light? <laughs> My god, now all of a sudden Narasaki seems absolutely terrifying and intimidating. Jesus Christ. My eyes have gotten used to the dark by now. I see. Good night and sweet dreams. Thanks. Ooh, my God. Wow. Okay. Damn. Narasaki seems absolutely terrifying right now. Oh my God. God! Jesus fucking Christ! Narasaki waved me goodbye and disappeared into the darkness. Her footsteps grew distant until I could no longer hear them. The lights seem to have grown somewhat smaller compared to when Narasaki was here.
Holy shit. I... Is this her perspective from the previous scene? Our voices might have grown too loud. As Takako began lightly swarm squirming on Sachiko's lap. Sachiko put her hand on Takako's head, making her calm down. Perhaps I was just curious why Takako was so excited about everything. I can see Takako's closed eyelids through Sachiko's hands. They relaxed for a second and seemed about to open, but closed tight again. Her ponytail cast a long shadow in the lighter's light. I felt my body grow heavy as I observed her. I could really go for a drink. Perhaps. I slowly stood up. Feeling like a stashing me to stone. I should be on my way. So now we're seeing the same conversation from Narazaki's perspective. So how do we leave? I'll walk out. You should just go to sleep if you start feeling drowsy. That's all I need to do? Yeah. I'll leave the lighter with you. Having seen this darkness for so long, it's possible your consciousness might melt away or something before you even get the chance to grow sleepy. Don't leave this area, okay? Okay. Well then. I turn towards the darkness. Are you going to be okay? Such a last. It's no big deal. Is there anything else bothering you? No, I'm sure you'll be fine. No matter what happens. I will. Don't you need any light? My eyes have gotten used to the dark by now. I see. Good night. And sweet dreams. Thanks. I walked for a while, then glanced back. The light had turned to an, into a vague orange dot in the distance. As I continued on, it began moving toward the left before completely disappearing, almost like the setting sun. From here on out, I'd be in complete darkness. The floor was the first thing that disappeared from my vision. I couldn't even tell if I was ascending or descending a slope. I glanced down to realize I couldn't see my legs anymore. The darkness crawled up and up until I couldn't even see the tip of my nose. With my eyes completely unable to perceive light, I had no way of telling where I was. I strained my senses to try and feel for something, but all I managed to discern was the thick darkness pressing heavily against my skin. The more I walked, the heavier it got. I remembered a TV program where they carried out an experiment by submerging a water bottle and ball in the sea. Both ended up crushed by water pressure. I felt as though the darkness was seeping into me through my eyes and skin. It was slowing my pace. I feared it, I feared it might immobilize me completely. 
continue pressing forward. With all my strength, when an image appeared in the darkness, I turned my face away and closed my eyes to let it pass. However, that image wasn't created by the light, but my, but my, my own mind. I wonder what it was. Right back to Hinamizawa here, I just... I don't know whose perspective this is. I'm guessing Sachiko? I could hear the cry of cicadas around me. There was a small fountain of sand piled up in the middle of the sandbox, with a tunnel passing right through it. Countless water canals surrounded it on all sides. Finishing her masterpiece, Takako stood up and shook the sand off her hands. Oh, so this is Narasaki. She turned to the water supply Sachiko was sitting in front of. Sachiko had a doll and a towel in her hands. What are you doing? She was wiping the doll's face with a wet towel. Her face got dirty. Did you get it off? It's not working. There were some visible brown stains on the face of Sachiko's doll. Let's ask the nurse. Nurse! Tachiko. Tachiko. Takako let out, let out a loud shout. What happened? A young woman who had been tidying up the toys scattered inside the building turned to Takako with a yellow toy car in hand. The doll got dirty. Oh, the doll got dirty. Could you, could you get it cleaned up? A somewhat feisty young looking young woman Approached them and looked at Tasako's Sachiko's doll over Takako's head. Oh, this looks like a stain. I guess it'd be possible to wash it out if you undid the sewing. But then it might actually fall apart. Sachiko's fingers clutched the doll tighter. You can't fix it? I don't think it's worth the risk. Ajiko considered the doll's face for a long while. Make sure to take care of her if you want to keep playing with her. The nurse gently patted Sajiko's head a few times. I'm guessing this is, um, this is Sachiko? I'm just gonna guess here. Memories were leaking forth from the deepest corner of my mind, from the very boundary of the conscious and subconscious. As the vision paused, I instead focused my senses on my limbs. I think I got it. The chips. The chips are when Narasaki learned to go into people's minds. She was freaked out by that first time. She... Wasn't she? Like, she was freaked out when something weird happened that first time. In the chips. I balled my hand into a fist with all my strength, successfully swaying my consciousness away from that memory.
With that, I once again returned to the pitch black darkness. It seemed I had stopped before I realized. I didn't know how long I was lost in that memory. When I resumed walking, I couldn't even tell if I was really moving or not. Before long, I could no longer sense my body at all. Oh, well now. I said, unable to tell if I was really hearing my own words, or if they came from some distant memory again. This could be Sachiko or Narasaki, I don't know. It felt as though my arms and legs had melted into the darkness. Oh, okay, it's Narasaki. What the fuck? Oh my god. Okay, so this is Narasaki. Well now, I said. Unable to tell if I was really hearing my own words. Or if they came from some distant memory again. It felt as though my arms and legs had melted into the darkness. Perhaps I return to being just a doll, like in those memories. How did she become a human? I inhaled a deep breath and slowly let it out. I remembered how I talked to Sachiko just this earlier. She said it was odd to see me and Taka go together. In that moment, I felt something different about her. Her expressions and body language seemed to have grown richer. However, I couldn't tell what that meant. I wondered if I should tell her, but in the end I decided not to. The lighter's light had been flickering in front of Sajika's eyes. And from her perspective, I should have been sitting right beyond it. ever so faintly, feeling returned to the tips of my toes and fingers. I calculated where my head was supposed to be from their position and fixed my eyes in the darkness. It was the real thing. Complete darkness that melted the consciousness away. A phenomenon very similar to death. Damn, so she really did almost get swallowed up by the darkness. We're almost going like into Kingdom Hearts territory here. Okay. With some feeling having returned to my fingers, I began rhythmically removing moving them in an attempt to hypnotize myself. My legs moved unconsciously. My eyes could have seen anything, but my heart wouldn't move. All sorts of images appeared in front of my eyes. Nonetheless, my legs pushed me ever, ever, ever onwards. Is this back to Sachiko now? Sachiko, okay, so it's not back to Sachiko because it's mentioning her in the third person. Sachiko took a box off the top shelf of the closet, checked what was inside, then returned it to the same place. There were two more boxes in the closet. They had Takako's written on them in big letters. Sachiko filled the biggest box into the room and looked at the many other boxes she had collected. Okay, so now we're back to when she's packing Takako's things. There were already two transparent containers in front of the closet. She moved one of them with her leg and placed the box behind it. Inside the box, there were carving knives, a flute, and knitting set, and all sorts of other trinkets that Takako probably used back in school. Oh, God. Sajiko took them out of the box one by one, separating each item into two categories. Important things and trash. She 
She crushed the paper bag that was mixed in with the other articles and put it into the trash container. There was a radio cassette player underneath it. She plugged it into the electrical socket and flipped its switch. A familiar melody filled the cold, gloomy room through the, through the static. Sachiko turned around and looked at the bed. A doll she'd left on the edge had fallen down to the floor. Damn. That doll looks just like her, yeah. Sachiko reached out and picked it up. Its lips had frozen into a perpetual, almost confrontational smile. Its somewhat sardonic expression, as it looked over the room, made the doll appear almost like it was eager to ask a question or two. Okay, so... Is she really dead? But... But then the... The, the doll is for here. So this is before the doll became a human somehow. This too brings back memories. But I was looking for something else. Said Sajiko as she turned the cassette player off. The melody stopped and the cold, gloomy room once again fell into silence. Sajiko took out a blue rectangle shaped can from another box. There were several radio cassettes inside. Back in middle school, Takako recorded her own radio show onto a cassette. I wonder which one it was. I believe it should have a, have a yellow tape. Oh god, wow, this is really sad. <laughs> Sajiko took out a yellow cassette tape from the can and pushed it into the player. The cassette holder sounded a rusty yet vigorous click. Sajiko put her finger on the play button, hesitated for a few moments, then pressed it. An old pop song, song began playing from the player. As the song ended, Takako's voice suddenly rang out through the static. She said it was the first song she'd ever bought. Then she said this was her first recording and congratulated herself. Her show was basically her talking about the day, her day and introducing music she liked. Oh my god. This is really, really sad. <sighs> there were no guest quarters or letter reading sessions, of course. I tried listening to a radio show at night, and it was much more fun than I'd expected. When I told Takako about it, she'd brought this tape to school the next day. She said it was really weird to hear her own voice come through the recorder. And now she wanted to learn how to sing or something. <laughs> Sajika smiled. She then continued to talk about the history of the old cassette player. <sighs> used to be in Takako's house. And the two listened to the radio and the cassettes they bought. Sajiko paused and listened to the song Takako had introduced. She then began talking again. She shared her personal information with an almost gleeful expression. <sighs> Sajiko continued listening to the tape with the doll in her lap. Before I realized it, she had closed her eyes. 
I couldn't tell if she was sleeping or just absorbed in the music. The tape suddenly stopped in the middle of Taco's speech. Sajiko opened her eyes and took the tape out. She flipped it around, put it back into the holder, and pressed the play button. Now that I think about it, we'd robbed by Takako's old house some time after getting our first jobs. But this cassette player was no longer there by that time. It's not like we would have listened to it anyway, but... She faced the doll, but her eyes were gazing somewhere far away. She seemed to have been wondering why they weren't listening to music. If I could go back in time, I'd love to show her some better songs. Sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on. I just... <sighs> Jeez. Damn it. This fucking story, I fucking swear. Sorry. Sajiko stood up. Sajiko stood up and picked up the cassette player with one hand while holding the doll in the other. She then walked over to the bed. She sat down at his edge, placing the player on the side table and the doll by her pillow. Sajiko turned around and saw Takako on the bed. She extended her hand and touched her. I'll play my favorite song next. A very old western song came to life through the speakers. I looked up the meaning of the lyrics. Everything has a meaning. Even if I don't have them now, time will bring me the answers. This is my favorite song. I don't know why, but I really like it. I hope I'll eventually come to understand why. What an idiot. Sajiko murmured. Nonetheless, she made a smile. Perhaps she recalled a time when they listened to that song together.
Akako said it'd be the last song for the day. It began playing. I'm sorry. As the song came to an end and the tape stopped, the room felt completely silent. Oh my god. And there was a train in the background. Everybody's got different reactions, but well, I don't worry about it. <laughs> Sajika realized that her doorbell was ringing. She didn't know whether she had fallen asleep or was simply too deep in thought. But by the time she glanced at the clock, it was already midnight. Still, the doorbell was definitely ringing. Ajiko noticed light coming from one of the rooms. She went to bed before sunset, so there's no way she turned on any of the lights. She glanced at the doll by the pillow and embraced it. She listened to the sound in her bitterly cold bed. The sound of the doorbell seemed to have grown distant. What am I supposed to do? I could have sworn she said something. However, both her words and the doorbell became barely audible to me. It felt as though everything I was observed was happening somewhere far away in another world. Sometimes things also yeah, do affect you more as you get older. Void Dweller, I know that it, it, it's, it's different, so. I, jeez. Do, do you know how long this scene is? I, I, I don't know, like, if this is a good place to stop or not. Ah, oh, great. Now my nose is all stuffed. Very short? Okay, thanks, Guppy Force. I stepped on something and almost tripped. It felt softer than the rocky ground I've been walking on so far. On kicking it, I heard a wooden thump. I prodded a few more times with my toes, making it quiver. Quivering extended across the entire cave, turning into rumbling. Holy shit, what's going on here? What is this? Two bright lights lit up as it traveled through the area. I looked down to see train tracks below my feet. Oh my god, oh god! I shaded my eyes with my hand and looked around, even eventually spotting a hole in the wall. Okay, it is Narasaki. Damn! Back to reality. Oops, there goes gravity. I stepped into the hole just moments before the giant object with headlights zoomed past me. The light from its window is flickering in the darkness.
Yeah, yeah, I definitely think uh, you, you, it's something that you feel more as you get older. Like, if you're younger, then um, it, it's different. You did not make any jokes. Wait, it's fine, Void Dweller. Seriously. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I stopped in the hole just for the John up with headlights soon past me. The light from its window is flickering in the darkness. I couldn't make any out any human shape until the silhouettes beyond said windows, though. After the train passed, I climbed out of the hole and brushed the dust on my clothes. Looking in the direction the train went. I could see the lights of the outside world. I followed the train tracks outside. Eventually emerging into a forest covered by fog. The moon parked in the dark blue sky, right above the mountains and trees. I didn't know what time it was. Following the now abandoned railway line, I eventually made out the roof of the mansion looming above the trees, beyond the trees. Okay, so she made it out of the mind world. So what the fuck is Narasaki? She used to, she knows that she used to be a doll. Okay, so she's not, that's not going to be like a revelation for her. Like, what the fuck is she? How did she get to be alive? And like, I guess that would explain her powers because she's already like a, Supernatural type of being. <laughs> the familiar pathway led me back to the Western style mansion I knew so well. As I emerged on the road leading to the library, I took a turn toward the entrance of the mansion's inner yard. The doors weren't locked. I turned the doorknob and silently stepped inside. Okay, I'm starting the next scene. Okay, so it's a good place to stop here then? Okay, I see. Wow. What an episode this was. Okay. Oh, we're getting to your favorite part of the game, Blue Shift? Oh my god, wow. Things are really heating up. This... Oh wow, this story is fucking incredible. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I really want to know, like... Uh, we get more answers, but that just leaves us with more questions. Like, oh my god, like, I, I... Like, how come we haven't even seen Narasaki in, in Tachiko's world... Uh, Tachiko, fucking hell. Takako's world line. <laughs> like, if she can go there. Like, what is the fu Like, what the fuck is the meaning of that? It's like Takako trapped there or something? It feels like she is. Is Mayuko like a construct made in, Sa in Sachiko's image? Like to keep Takako busy? Or something like that? Like I... So she doesn't try to leave? Okay, answers are coming. Okay, thank you, Blue Shift. This is just incredible. Oh my god. Oh 
Oh my god. I really want to see. Oh my god. We're in the answer arcs now. <laughs> yeah, warning. I bet it's Sanai. It's either Sanai or Narasaki that's going to be giving this warning. I'm betting. Giving they are the two, by far, the two most potentially antagonistic characters in, in this whole story. So I'm guessing it's going to be one of those two. <coughs> Nanai, I mean Nanai, sorry. God damn it! <laughs> James are too fucking similar! <laughs> oh, fucking girl! God. <laughs> you guys are too funny. Thanks for that. You're cheering me up <laughs> after that sad scene. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tomorrow we're doing Turn of Out of the Golden Witch. And in two days we continue this. I can't wait. So until then, I will say so long. Farewell. I'm going to say good night. You are all the sweetest of hearts. See ya.